All right, so this is a new technique that I've actually learned uh, since the workshop, and this is the, the next one we're going to look at. And we're going to do a little bit more um, kind of setup here. So uh, first I'm going to find my mousey, wherever it has disappeared to. Okay, there you are. Uh -huh. um, and what we're going to look at next is a... Um, I'm going to close all these. Poof gone. Um, we're going to look at a slightly different way to do this. So we're going to look at how this might work in the vertex stage instead of doing it all the way over in our fragment stage. And the catch here is that this particular technique is very powerful if we're doing our, no our noise function uh, inside of our vertex shader instead of uh, sampling from uh, another texture. Now that's, that's a slightly different setup. Um, this is, you know, bonus material here uh, that is awesome, but also uh, a little bit like mind bending. So ride the ride with me here and hopefully by the end of it, um, we will have something interesting to kind of take a look at. Okay, so we're gonna need a geometry for this. Uh, we're going to need a camera. We're going to need a light. And this particular technique, um, and we're going to go ahead and render this also, uh, this technique is going to forego the need of any sampler to achieve our displacement. So we're actually going to do this all with some good old fashioned mathsy mathsy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn up our vert count to our, our rows and columns at 250 a piece. Let's make this maybe like 2.5 by 2.5. Too big. Uh, two by two maybe. Oh, a yowza. Two by two. Ah, excellent. Okay, so we're gonna start the same way. We're gonna start with a a fong. We're gonna go ahead and output the shader from this. Okie dokie. Boop. That's magic. And this time around, we're actually going to spend a lot of time here living inside of our vertex shader because that's actually where a bunch of magic is going to happen for us. And we'll kind of take a look at what that means. Uh, so I'm going to use Control E to edit that. Wonderful. We're going to need a whole stack of uniforms this time to make this work. Uh, in this case, we're going to add a uniform uh, that is called... It's going to be a VEC3 called Noise Scale. Um, we're also going to add a uniform that's a VEC3, or excuse me, that's a, just a float here. That's our displacement scale, our dis, disp scale. We're going to add a uniform that's a, f uh, let's make this one a VEC4, and we'll call this Translate. Translate. And then, uh, Let's stick with that for right now. We could do some more kind of fancy things here, but for the time being, let's let's roll here. Now, we're also going to add some functions uh, to our shader, and we're going to stick those right here. That's It's going to get real sassy real fast, um, and that's great. It's going to be uh, a little bit majestic, hopefully. Um, hopefully, that's gonna, it's going to be really beautiful here by the end of it. Okay. So, uh, what do we want to do? Well, you know, before we did this whole texture sampling business um, to get our point displacement, but we can actually, uh, we can do that with a few things that are built here right into touch. Um, so let's take a look at what that might mean. Um, we could do something like this. Like, let's make a new VEC3 that's our new P and uh, write our new point. Uh, and what we're going to do, um, well, I guess what we should do first is this. This is going to be a little bit wandering, but uh, hang with me. Uh, we're going to make an, uh, a float called height. And here what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, TD simplex noise. This is a built-in function. Um, and we're going to use this and we're going to populate it with a few things. Uh, we're going to give it a VEC4. Uh, and in this VEC4, we're going to use our P, our point position, and then we're going to multiply that by our noise scale, 
and we're going to add uh, to that our translate XYZ and then we're going to do translate dot XYZ W here at the end and we're going to take all that and multiply it by our disp scale. Um, oh good and we've, we've messed something up. What did we miss here? Because we missed something. Um, 31. Oh, oh, that's what we missed. Yoink. Well, let's get rid of this for a minute. And let's make sure that part is good. TD simplex noise. Okay. Woo. Made it. All right. Now, you'll notice that, you know, we added these things over here, but we haven't added them to our shader yet. That, that's all right. We're going to get there. Right. Uh, let's come back to new P. So our VEC3, that's our new point position, is going to be just like we did before, right? Our normal times height plus P. So far, so good. We should be able to stick new P in here. Nothing's happening because, of course, we don't have some of those things added yet. So we're going to add some of our uniforms here that we already described. Um, and so that's like a noise scale, for example, is one of those. And then we also had disp scale. And then we also had translate. Okay, all right. So we have all those puppers here. We should be able to apply those as our material. And lo and behold, that is, that's looking all right. Now we should be able to do something right here, right? Like abs time dot seconds. And that looks pretty familiar. Art should look pretty familiar. Uh, and if you're scratching your head right now, that's that's okay. That's totally all right. Let's let's pull apart what's going on here, just a little bit. So we've got this translation uh, business. We've got our scaling situation, and then we also have our um, our noise scale all together. Now our noise scale um, is actually going to let us scale in X. Right? It'll let us scale in Y. It'll let us scale in Z. Now it's hard for us to really, you know, kind of understand what that would mean in this two-dimensional object, but we have that nonetheless if we uh, chose to use it. Now we can translate again in X. We can translate in Y, and we can translate in Z. Um, but we can also translate in this fourth dimension time, um, which is you know, we could translate our, our noise in lots of different ways. Um, it's just handy to have one other dimension that we can manipulate here. Uh, and there's lots of reasons for that. And before we kind of end up down that rabbit hole, um, it, it's valuable to just kind of like hold on to that kind of roughly if we can. I'm going to go ahead and reset these to 111. Now let's go back to our uh, vertex shader to kind of understand what's going on there. So. We're going to seed this um, simplex noise function with a VEC4. And what we do is we pass in our original point position. So this is our starting seed. And we multiply this by our noise scale, which is also a VEC3. We add our translation, which is a VEC3. And then finally, the last component of our VEC4 that acts as our seed is this translate W. That's our, our time position. So. You know, part of what we're seeing here in this translation left right is we're just changing our seed values, but we're changing our seed values for every point. And that's part of the reason that we can see um, this particular effect work the way that it does. Now that's pretty that's pretty slick. That's you know, that's a pretty cool thing so far. Now, you know, looking at it, we still have the same kind of flat shading problems that we had before. But handy here is to know that, <laughs> pardon this cat that is uh, chirping loudly at us in this process, um, part of what we could do here is we can feed this a sphere, uh, and we should see something very similar to how a noise SOP might work, right? If we uh, turn on an, an expression here, abs time, abs tune dot seconds. Right, we're seeing a, a change that's applied, and let's 
try Z instead. We're seeing uh, the application of uh, this deformation uh, as happening uh, to all our points without having to worry about any of that kind of like texture point business that we did before where we actually kind of fed or where we used UVs to describe um, some of how all of this was going to be actually deformed. So this is actually a pretty slick way to be able to think about writing a noise function um, right here inside of our vertex shader. Um, that's that's pretty all right. Now you'll see that we do have right. We're still mirrored across our axis here, and that's because our points, you know, top bottom are going to be really similar. Um, and we, you know, there's a few things we could probably do to, to cheat that a little bit. Um, we could actually seed this probably with our point index instead. Uh, that would be one way to kind of trick that because then we'd have a unique number or unique value. Um, we probably just want to like add that in along someplace. Um, anyway, this is pretty all right. This is pretty, this is pretty jamming. Uh, and we can do an awful lot of really fun stuff with this, especially as we start to play with the scale of how this works. Um, and we can, of course, you know, kind of play with our noise scale also. So there's, I mean, we are, we're cooking with propane right now. And this is, this is pretty slick.